Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And before we get into the Rashad Bateman story, I want to take a minute to say thank you to all the new subscribers, all the new Patreons, and everybody that comes through on a weekly basis just to hit the like button, subscribe, have conversations in the chat box, and just want to say thank you to all you guys that have pushed us to where we are so far. We're going to strive to make 2024 a better place um, so we can come in and talk about football and whatever life brings us in this Ravens community. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And before we get into the Rashad Bateman video, we have a contest going on. Our playoff bracket challenge, the rules and how you participate is in my community tab. Go over to my community tab. Check that out. Uh, you can win a Purple Kool-Aid Chalice, a Ravens Roundtable shot glass from the meet and greet, a FTMF black long sleeve hoodie tee, and the way you do that, all the ways to do that is in the community tab. Go over there, click that, do that, join the join the challenge, see if you can win that, and I appreciate it. But let's get into Rashad Bay. So uh, Jeff Zeribi put an article in The Athletic about Rashad Bateman. And there were a couple of things in that article I want to highlight and talk about when dealing with Rashad Bateman. And let me bring those things up right here. All right. First thing up, and we know Rashad Bateman has had a up and down, up and down tenure while here in Baltimore. And the first thing that stuck out in that article to me, it says nobody really knows that. But I think I can tell the story now because I've, I've made it this far. Bateman said last week. When I first got back here, and that's in the offseason, me and the coaching and the training staff, we didn't even know if I was going to be able to play this year. We thought I would need another surgery. And we know Bateman has been up and down with his injuries. Uh, he's had issues, I think, with confidence. Um, and it just looks like he's not been happy. We know he's had personal issues and whatnot. But I didn't know that he was not healthy when he first got back. The article went on to say this. I was in pain. I wasn't seeing the results. I was unable to physically run, cut, or put pressure on my foot. Based on my rehab, I was supposed to be able to train this offseason and show up for training, training camp in tip-top shape. That, according to my surgery date and my rehab process. Unfortunately, my foot took a left turn this past offseason. So he had surgery, and according to his surgery, he was supposed to be ready for training camp. He was able to. He was supposed to be able to show up and do all the things necessary to be ready for training camp. And we remember when training camp first jumped off, all the receivers were there participating. He wasn't. He was holding a dummy. If you if you think about some of those videos where, you know, they were showing OBJ and Zay and all those other guys doing the drills and whatnot, Bateman was holding a dummy and or throwing the football for the drill. Remember that. Think back to, you know, preseason and all that. Bateman was throwing footballs and drills and whatnot. He wasn't actually participating in the receiver drills. And this is kind of, he's telling the reasons why. All right, went on to say this. Mentally, he handled the weight of losing two people close to him and learned to block out the outside negativity and criticism that came from the drops, missed opportunities, and the expectations of a first-round pick. So what he did was he started processing all these negative things that started happening to him. So he had the injuries. He had the loss of loved ones. He started to compartmentalize all these things and start to find a way to deal with the negativity. On top of that, you know, when you're a first round pick, there's an expectation that says, hey, we should get a certain type of product uh, productivity from you. You should be able to put certain numbers on the field because you're a first round pick. The same, this is kind of some of the same thing that Pat Queen dealt with because he was a first round pick. Some of the same stuff that Kyle Hamilton dealt with early in his, you know, rookie year because he was a first round pick. So when you're picked in that first round, there's a certain level of um, expectation that comes with it. And sometimes people don't handle it as well mentally. Sometimes people do, but everybody don't handle it the same. And sometimes, when you're a first round pick, uh, sometimes that stuff is on on um, what you will be in the future, not what you are now. Sometimes you develop later and come out and be that guy. But everybody's not that. All right, let's let's go on. Let's move on. 
Emotionally, he challenges his frustrations, frustrations from not getting the ball that much as much as he'd like into embracing whatever he was asked to do to help Baltimore win. And with the Ravens taking the AFC North and finishing with the conference best 13 and four, uh, that in with, with, I'm sorry, that in itself has been plenty satisfying for Bateman, satisfying for Bateman. Now, with that being said, there's this saying out there that winning cures all. And, you know, with this statement right here, he's being a team player, which I think he should be. But I want to play devil's advocate right here. If we were not as successful as we are now, would this still apply? Would he still be as as team oriented as he is? That's that's where I'm at. Would he still be as team oriented and still be as as happy go lucky if we were not 13 and four? If we were eight and eight, would he still be this way? And I'm and I'm not knocking him. This is no shade. I'm just posing that question out there, being devil's advocate. Moving on. And he's, it goes on. And these are his words right here because of the quote. I'm not going to say it's been easy, but that's because I'm hungry. You know my abilities. You know what I'm capable of, Bateman said. As a competitive player, it's easy to get frustrated. I feel like I've been there, but I've matured. What we're chasing this year is bigger than how many targets I get. You just have to be able to put the organization first, put the team first, and trust the process of what's going on. I've kind of fallen in love with that. Being able to be in the position that we're in now has helped me fall in love more with the process and just enjoying my time here. And again, I think having Odell there, realizing what Odell went through and bouncing back from that. Having Nelly there and what Nelly went through in Philly and let him and him coming there and just enjoying the process because Nelly don't get a lot of targets, but you see a smile on Nelly's face all the time. I'm not sure of the conversations he may have had with Zay, but Yesterday, finding out the tragedy tragedies that Zay has been through, maybe Bateman knew about those tragedies and kind of helped him process his tragedies and, and, and put them in perspective and deal with them and whatnot. So maybe that's where this this family brotherhood ha- is starting to take place. And, and we kind of kind of see it because we see in these different stories coming from the different parts of the wide receiver room. So, so maybe there is something stronger than football building in this wide receiver room that we just can't see it as outsiders. And this, you know, getting little bits and pieces of the story from different spots, you can kind of see that. But I really like this quote from him saying he's fully bought in. He's fully bought into the team aspect of, of being a Raven. But notice, even when this, he – as the season went on, he's probably gotten healthier. And we saw later on in the season some of his routes. And he may not have gotten the targets he wanted, but his routes and his play started to get better. But let's move on. After a 56-19 to throttling of the Miami Dolphins in Week 17, which the Ravens clinched the best record in the AFC, John Harbaugh summoned Bateman to the middle of the locker room for an embrace. Uh, how about Bates' big day, Harbaugh exclaimed. Harbaugh predicted to Bateman during the week that he'd made some big plays against the Dolphins. Bateman went out and had his most productive game of the season, catching four passes for 54 yards. Now, after that, he called Bateman to the middle of the um, circle. And here's what happened after that. Now, let me get it. How about, yeah. how about big day Bates? Hey! I appreciate y'all boys, man. I love playing with y'all. Uh, it wouldn't be a better place to uh, be right now. Uh, I don't been through a lot, so you know it feels amazing, bro. So let's keep let's keep stacking these. Yeah. Yeah. Now in that video, he was so emotional. You could see well, I felt like I could see him starting to tear up in that moment and just really say how much he was appreciative of being in that locker room with those guys and them going through what he's been through and whatnot. That was a, a, a big, a big moment for, for him to just to show how appreciative he was of the guys. Now I talked briefly about his play 
This is a chart talking about how different receivers get a lot of separation. Now, we know Bateman does, didn't get a lot of targets, but we could look at the All-22 and see how much separation he was getting from guys. His route started to be A1, top-notch. Now, everybody from my mouse to the right, top-notch separation. Brandon Ayuk right here, Tyreek Hill right here, Mike Evans right here, Chris Olave, Gary Wilson, Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman over here with the, the top-tier wide receivers as far as getting separation. Rashad Bateman. So he's getting open. Didn't necessarily get all the targets that he might have wanted or that he needed or whatever to be considered the top receiver. But he was running routes, getting open, got dog. All right, now, the article went on to say, this is Bateman quote again. I thought the first time I got hurt, I was at my lowest, Bateman said. Then I thought the second time I got hurt, I was at my lowest. But last summer, all that that was going on, and then in the off season, my grandma passed and stuff, then I thought a lot. As a young adult, that hit me pretty hard. It hit my family pretty hard. I'm in a position now where I have to take care of my family in certain areas. I've had a lot of stuff. I've had to do a lot of that stuff and had to be there for them in ways that I didn't know I have to. A lot of my time and efforts go to my family as they should. But there are times in my career where I've had to put my attention there because of major life changes. Now, obviously, situation happened with his, his grandmother. He had an, a school age cousin uh commit suicide so that hurt him and he just had a lot of family stuff to go on top of the injuries where the young man was mentally hurt mentally hurt on top of being physically hurt and that's a lot to put on your plate that's a lot to put on your plate and sometimes football is secondary people sometimes football is secondary to to life and as OTR Mike always say, and it kind of takes on a different meaning in this case, sometimes life be lifing. And in his case, life was lifing and he needed to sit back and kind of do, you know, what was best for him. Now, there was a there were issues that, you know, they kind of felt something was going on at the castle, but they didn't really know. And the first sign of kind of stuff not being right was when he came out and said what he said about DaCosta when the stuff was going on with Lamar. And we all know the comment he made. It was like, and I'm paraphrasing right here, how about you not blame the players or something and do what you need to do, talking about DaCosta's, you know, when when they was going through what they was going through in the post, in the offseason. And so that was to them like a red flag, like, hey, what's going on with this dude? And so um, obviously all that went on, but they squashed it before it even – before they even had to come back for off-season workouts. And so they got that taken care of and whatnot. But again, Bateman has been through a lot. He's been through uh, a lot of stuff mentally. He's been through a lot of stuff physically. But I think he's on track to have a great postseason run, to have a great um, – whatever his time in Baltimore is, I think it's on track to be, to be good. Um, again, his route running has got back to what it was when he first got drafted. Um, he don't necessarily have to have the targets because we got so many guys that we can share the ball and, and spot it around. And he just needs to be a puzzle, a puzzle piece in the Ravens puzzle. That's what he needs to be. And um, I just wanted to share, you know, the bits and pieces of this article that I thought was very, very interesting. And I appreciate you guys for coming through. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And uh, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Bye week. So we'll watch these games this weekend and we'll see who we play by Sunday afternoon, maybe even before then. And then we'll kind of get into the previews of who we got coming up on the 20th or the 21st, man. This is Coach Evans with another episode of Sip the Tally Films. Peace and love.